So, the complexity and simplicity. This is a very fancy title, and if you ever met me online or at any conference, this seems very out of character. But I'm a married woman in Germany now, so we have to stick with this. We're going to do some really good talks right now. We're going to do fancy stuff. Also, it's friends, so it feels fitting. I work at Code Sandbox. I'm not going to ask who uses Code Sandbox, because I can literally see 20 people only, which is great. But uh, Code Sandbox is an online editor. It's basically very over-engineered code pen. And the very thing that is very interesting about Code Sandbox is that a button can do 100 different things. And sometimes call 100 different APIs. Buttons do magic things at Code Sandbox. And that's what I want to talk about a bit. So for example, this button right there that says add dependency adds an NPM dependency, which is, sounds pretty obvious. But it actually goes to unpackage, gets the thing, puts it in your HTML as a script tag. This one adds prettier configuration. By default, you already have prettier configuration, but it will actually change the prettier configuration that we use in VS Code in the browser. This button deploys your entire sandbox to Netlify, which I was actually the one who built this, and I'm not saying this as a bragging situation. I'm saying this as I've cried in the shower several times. I have a bathtub, so it's fine. Uh, this one creates a GitHub repository. By that, I mean that it gets all of your sandbox, zips it. Yes, you can zip things in the browser. That's also something that I found that is working there. And it ships it to GitHub. Creates the repository with whatever you name it. But the real thing that I find most interesting about Code Sandbox is that so that you can just click that button without doing anything else, there is a lot of complexity behind the scenes. I know it because I still don't know all of the app. So the idea is that we take the complexity away so you don't have to care about that complexity. You only need to click a button. That's the same idea from apps like Netlify, from apps like, I don't know who has ever used apps like Trainline, which is one of the only apps that books trains without you crying over the app and being like, what the fuck? And I want to say that making the web easier for everyone, including people like my mom, which need to pay their bills, and she does pay some, which I'm really proud of her, uh, and more accessible, and I don't mean just in terms of people with uh, some sort of handicap, I mean for everyone, is on all of us, is on us as developers. It's not, not as much as product designers think it's on them, it's actually on us. And I want to say, did you ever look at a web page and think, you don't need to ask me this, or why are you doing this, or what the fuck is wrong with you? And one example that I keep seeing is this. Every time I log into PayPal, it takes about 20 seconds. I mean, I live in Berlin, so my internet is bad, but not that bad. And it keeps saying securely logging you in. What does that even mean? I, to this day, I really want to know, because to this day, I think it's a set timeout that they have to make it look more secure. Like, like ATMs being slow because it's secure. Sure, guys. So we're going to talk about forms. Forms are the Paris Bovet airport of the internet. And so forms are that thing that you're like, I'm never going never gonna to do that again. And then you're back at that Ryanair flight because there's 20 euros. And you're like, damn it, I'm back in Schoenefeld. It happens to everyone. It's fine. Every city has a crap airport. We have Schoenefeld. It's fine. So let's see what we'll actually be doing. And I'm actually take off my phone, out of my pocket. So I made a website that sells coffee. Because we all need coffee. I am a huge coffee snob, so this is what we're doing. And so what I have is that you buy the coffee, and then blah, 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 and you select the things, you check out, and you buy the coffee. Cool. So let's talk about languages. Languages are hard. And one of the things that you see right now on this website is that it's in French, which may make sense to you, but I, I'm so sorry, I don't speak French. My teacher was a drunk. We do teach French. It wasn't French, it was Portuguese. Um, so what I'm doing right now is that I am, this has a point, don't worry. I'm not being, I'm not being terrible. Uh, what I'm doing right now is that I am getting my IP and checking where, where in the world I am. So this checks the IP and it's like, oh, she's in Paris, let's put her in French. But no. Uh, that's not the point because I don't speak French. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually be really brave and I'm going to disconnect this and you're going to see something really kind of weird. So Batcave is my hotspot and my hotspot still has a Portuguese card because I allow two cards because I have a OnePlus. And one really fun thing about 
uh, I think, I'm not sure, but Vodafone at least, doesn't actually change your IP. My IP is still in Porto for some reason. So if I reload this page and we pray to God, it's now in Portuguese. And if I use my German card, it's gonna be in German, which doesn't make any sense. So one of the things that I wanna do is that I wanna check the language of the browser. Like, so that's the language that I'm sure you speak because you chose that language. So I'm gonna see to part one. This is not magic, it's just a shortcut that I have for Git checkout. And it's in English. So it's in English because my browser's language is in English. My default browser is ENUS for some reason, because I don't know, but it's in English. So the way that I did this is that really hacky thing that you check if your browser supports navigator.languages. If it does, you use the first one because you usually have an array. So in my case, I have English, Portuguese, for some reason Spanish. I think most people think it's the same thing. Let's be honest, it's basically the same thing. Um, and if it supports that, give me the first one, and then you can split it and get the two first things because some people may have EN US or PTBR, for example. If it doesn't, you get navigator.language, which is the first one. If, if you're using IE, you get navigator.user language. If everything fails and you're using Opera Mini, default to the language that you want to default to. Addresses are actually harder. So for example, I think Portugal, Spain, and France use, you go into the house and your house is the second on the left, for example, which makes sense, everyone understands that. And when I moved to Germany, I've realized that they don't use that, also not in Bulgaria. They have your name. So like, your name is Vieira, and that's how they find you. And you're like, how do they find you? They don't. Every time someone at DHL rings the door, I'm like, in the house is fine. And, and they start speaking in German, I'm like, I just know in the house is fine. <laughs> And addresses are hard. And one thing that I keep seeing a lot as well is that if I click by, for example, not for example, I have to click by because that's my talk, you have your data and then you also have billing data. In my entire life, I've had the billing data be different from the shipping data, I think twice. And I'm not that young, like I'm 27. I've seen things. <laughs> and they, it, they're usually not different, I'm just saying, I'm sorry. And I've seen this a lot. And this is actually the easiest one that doesn't actually have a lot of code. So I am going to come here and see the part two. I'm trying to write as little as possible because my hands keep shaking. And what I did is that your building data is equal to your shipping data by default. So when you send this to your server, or I'm assuming you have a server, if this checkbox is checked, whatever you sent in the shipping, in the billing ship, oh God, shipping data, is gonna be the same to the billing data, which 99% of the times it is. I wanna say that the main objective of forms is to make people not cry. No one likes forms. But some people really hate forms. So you have to make those people not cry. So this is literally a checkbox. I can't believe I'm showing, look, .js, a checkbox. With React, I know. <laughs> so let's look a bit about accessibility. So on this website, if I tab along, if I can find my tab, everything works. It's all fine, I can do all these things. It's fine. But I'm actually using placeholders. These are not labels, these are placeholders, so if I type, they actually go away. And I wanna talk a bit about placeholders because I've seen this as a big trend of people just using placeholders as labels. And I think this mostly comes a little bit from designer perspective because they look nice. They look really nice. So in terms of accessibility, I want to tell you that placeholders are not read by some assistive technology. They are read by VoiceOver on Mac, and they are read by JAWS very recently, if, if, you, if you updated it, but they're not read by others. And so the, the person just gets there and it's like, here's an input. For what? I don't know. That's cool. Uh, also, usually placeholders, they can be styled, but they're usually very light like this. So if you have any type of problems in your eyes, you're probably not gonna be able to read whatever is in there because it usually never passes contrast. And really random thing is that placeholders do not get translated. If I change this website to German, for example, and German is here, look at that pretty flag, and I reload this page, I don't know why I reloaded, and I translate to English, it says translated, but it didn't actually translate it. Did it translate? It's in English. It was like, damn. 
That would be terrible. It, trans it doesn't translate a thing. Actually, name is the same. That's why it is. Please continue. So it doesn't actually translate placeholders, which may seem like a little thing, but I feel like one of the things that a lot of companies forget is that people travel. This seems like a very basic thing, but there's a lot of companies that kind of forget that people travel and people move, mostly within the EU. And for example, PayPal actually doesn't let you change your country. You have to close your account and create a new account. That's the main thing. This makes it really hard because you also can't copy and paste them. I'm a developer, so I go there, I go in the placeholder, I copy it, and I, cop and I copy and paste it into Google Translate because I also don't know German. So we can do better at this. There's also another tiny issue is that if you have any type of memory loss, the moment you type, the label is gone. So you sometimes have problems remembering what the hell you typed. Like, what was this for? And placeholders are not labels. That's the main thing. They were never created and intended to be labels. They were intended to be tiny hints so that the users know better what they're actually going for. So I'm going to come here again, and I'm going to change to three. There we go. Beautiful. And this will reload and be in English. Uh, and Everything looks exactly the same, but that's the thing. You can make actual labels look like placeholders. So if I click here, this will actually go to the top, kind of like this. And this will give you the exact same idea, but literally remove all of the problems that you have with placeholders, because they will be translated, they will be accessible, and they will be there at all times, no matter how many things you fill in. So if I fill in my email, it will still be here. Amazing. So this is done with CSS. Obviously, I use CSS and JS. If you don't like it, I'm so sorry. But I can't go back. I apologize in advance. So one thing that I have is the only thing that I do here is that I create a new input for all of them as a React component. This can be done in any framework. There's nothing specific to React here. And I pass a prop that tells it if it's empty. So I pass a Boolean of the value. And basically, this tells the, the, the thing if it's empty or not. And when the input is on focus or it's valid, which is when, you, um, when I fill in my name, it's a valid name because there's no restrictions for the name. Uh, I just send the label to the top, which gives it these styles. And then if it's not empty, but it's invalid. So this happens when, for example, the email needs an at dot com, for example. So if you feel something and you get out and there's an error, the label would stay in the same place. But the problem is, if it's required, it's always invalid. <laughs> it's great. Uh, so if it's not empty and it's invalid, please send the label to the top. And also another thing that I keep hearing a lot is the problem of having to create IDs that are equal to the, I, the HTML4, in this case, or, HD, or 4 in normal HTML, of the label. This can be like, uniquely generated using something like a unique ID from Lodash, which is very small, I promise. And you can just use something like that, and it will give you this. Cool. So, I think everyone has been asked to make a custom select. Exactly. I can only see like 20 people and like four of them raise their hands. So that's a lot. That's four out of 20, math. Uh, custom selects are terrible. First of all, they're usually not accessible. They are usually terrible. One thing that keeps happening to me when people have custom selects is they ask for my nationality. And I'm like, that's fine. I know where I'm from. So I go there, I click P, and it doesn't do anything. And I'm like, uh, where the fuck is Portugal for five minutes? And I'm like, uh, wait, wait, I think I saw Poland. Something like that. You also memorize the one that's on top, because if you see it, you're like, it's here. I got it. And to this, I tell every designer to go on this website, which is called doineedacustomselect.com, and he basically just says no. <laughs> <laughs> It also explains, for the love of God, do not do this to me. Custom selects are a pain for everyone involved. They're not accessible and most of the times make the worst UI. No one cares about your styled option tags, I promise you. Did I do this on purpose for the talk? Maybe. Preparation. Credit cards. So first of all, no one wants to put their credit card online. And I can give you an example of a company that I used to work for where we did a redesign. And one thing that we did is that the only page that was redesigned and shipped first was the checkout page. Guess what happened? People thought they were changing websites. So they didn't put our credit card there. And I want to say, do not ask me what type of credit card I have. 
Because you can do this in the front end. So in the example that I have, which I've seen a lot, not only in Germany, is that people are like, what type of credit card do you have? And I'm like, as a developer, I'm like, this is a regex. You can do this, I promise you. So if I type MasterCard, they're like, hey, thanks. Let me put all my information on the internet so you can steal my money. Thanks, make it harder for me. You can do this with the regex. You can actually check what type of credit card a person has. You can also check if the credit card is valid, but I didn't do that. So we're going to go to part four. There we go. And we're going to go here. And if I reload the page, you see that there is this icon, which is the only one that I didn't get from the internet, because you can see it's not that good. And if I type 411, it's a visa, because all visas start with four. All MasterCards start with five, and then one number from one to five. So for example, this is a MasterCard. I've never had an American Express, because I'm a European. So I can't tell you. But this is the regex that takes to find these cards. There's some missing, like Maestro, for example, and Diners Club, which I've never seen in my life. Visa Electron is basically Maestro. So the thing is, it's not pretty, but it's really good UX. Because the user actually gets kind of like, oh, that's nice. See, they took the time. And that's the whole idea. Because the main idea of the internet and the main idea why we keep making websites is that we get more people to use the internet more people to get engaged and see all the amazing things that they can do in the internet. You take the burden so that the users don't have to have this burden, so that the users don't have to click extra buttons, they don't have to fill in things that they don't need. For example, one of the things that I found out as working in payments is that like 90% of the times the name on the card actually doesn't get sent anywhere. It's not used by Stripe, for example. It's just there for if for some reason you have a problem with fraud because it's actually not sent. Most of the times, it's not used. It's just something that you have to fill in for God knows why. So you take this away so that the users don't have to fill things in, so that the users don't give up halfway. Can't tell you how many times I gave up on a German website because everything was a placeholder, so I couldn't translate it, and I was like, you know what? No, I'm done. Even websites like Ticketmaster actually ha ask you what type of card you have. And I'm going to say that if your code being pretty won't make your users come back. The code we have at Code Sandbox is sometimes the hackiest thing. I have one entire file that literally has a thing on the top, like a comment that says, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry for this entire file. I promise I'll do better. But the thing is, it works. Like, it's a hack, but it works. And it gives a pretty good UX, and it gives a pretty good UI. So people don't care. Please explain. Please say you're sorry. Like, it's, I feel like it's necessary every time you put an important to say you're sorry that you put that important in, but it works. Don't take this to the extreme, but if it means creating a better experience for your users, that's why you're building the website for or the app. With small additions like this, you can make my mom pay the rest of the bills in her phone so I don't have to. And I can finally close my Portuguese account. Please do that, seriously. With the, I think with the small additions like this, we can have way more code sandboxes in the world. We can have more people coding, because we can actually make it easier for people to start coding. We can make it easier for people to do everything on the internet. It's not just about having a physical disability. It's about not being used to using the internet. We take these things for granted because we're the internet generation. Like We were born with this. It's great for us. Thank you. As uh, said, my name is Sara Vieira. I have five names, and I'm Nikita FTW on Twitter. If you want to follow me, I will publish my slides on the internet, and I will give you a pretty link, I promise. <laughs>